Greetings and salutations, I'm Kev. Welcome to this Let's Play of Outpost 2, and I'll be talking for a while before we start playing. Bear with me, please. Uh, this is one of the many RTS games that were created uh, in the wake of the successes of games like Command and Conquer and Warcraft Orcs of Humans, but before Starcraft showed up and became the benchmark of the whole genre, so it's a bit peculiar. Uh, Outpost 2 is far more focused on base building and management than the other titles I've mentioned, and uh, that's part of why I remember it so fondly because of all that extra stuff. And it also has a very rich background story in the form of two fairly short novels, uh, one for each faction in the game, and, and you'll get access to one chapter between every single mission. And that kind of unfolds the story rather nicely. And this will does mean that we'll be reading it quite a bit <laughs> during this play. Sorry about that. Fair warning. Alpos 1. That was a very different beast. Uh, it was a space colony survival game that got incredible hype before it was released, including a very infamous 93% score from PC Gamer, which is way above what it should have. Uh, in fairness, they reviewed the game based on a beta build before something like half the features that the developers promised were ever put in, and the bulk of those weren't put in, because the game was kicked out of the door, ahead of schedule, as so many games were in that area. Uh, even after the final patches, the Outpost 1 was a fairly lackluster game, to be honest. Oh yeah, the demo will kick in every once in a while. Uh, that's the screensaver for the game. Um, yeah, uh, The only thing that somewhat carried over from Outpost 1 into Outpost 2 is the core of the background story. Outpost 1's story was effectively... Um, well, Outpost 1's story effectively ended once you arrived at the planet and uh, a rebel splinter colony was founded. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll showcase that. Let's, with the magic of video editing, I'll clip in the uh, or the actual intro video for Outpost 2 here. Here we go. Bon series computer activated. Beginning alpha command level briefing for your eyes only. Historical overview. The Earth is dead. As the asteroid fragments landed, the last few survivors departed the solar system, seeking a new home among the stars. World after unsuitable world was rejected. Their resources low, their situation desperate. A marginally suitable planet was found. They called the world New Terra. It was cold, dry, nearly airless, but they saw possibilities. In that spirit of optimism, they named their colony Eden. They came with the best of intentions, to build, grow, and thrive. And for a time, they did. Then conflict arose between the colonists, and a splinter colony, Plymouth, was founded. New Terra would be their home, but on what terms? Plymouth wished to live in harmony with the planet, adapting themselves to live in its harsh realm, no matter the cost. Eden planned to tame its new home to conquer it and terraform it into a new Earth using advanced biotechnology. The two philosophies could not coexist. Talks grew heated as Plymouth learned Eden's secret intention to proceed with their plan. In protest, Plymouth destroyed the last satellite link, condemning them to silence. Only one planet, but two very different worlds. Which will you choose? Okay, if everything worked, you just saw the intro video, that's as far as it goes. Um, that, oh, that's the basic setup. Life on Earth was just crushed by space rocks, and we're stuck on a Mars-like planet far, far away from home. Um, 
And you probably noticed the crappy resolution of the game by, by now. Um, I'm currently using a virtual machine, using my original game discs, because this game is currently not available at any modern outlets like Steam or uh, good old games, anything like that. I'm fairly certain that Activision still holds the copyright, um, since they've taken over so many other Sierra titles, Sierra titles uh, but they've not repackaged this one, or, the, or Outpost 1 for that matter. Um, and the only legal source I know at the moment would be copies of the original game being sold on open marketplaces like Amazon or eBay. Um, now, Outpost 2 is kind of curious. It's 20 years old now, like, released in 1997. Um, but it will install and run just fine on Windows 10. That's rare for a game that old. But the patches do not, however. And that's why I'm on a virtual machine, so I could apply the patches. Um, plus, of course, there are a few other slight snags in the graphics and stuff, so yeah. Uh, and I've tried to boost the image size as much as I could between the virtual machine and the game itself, and... Well, the game basically runs at, uh, natively at 640x480, and the videos are even smaller at 480x320, I think. And this is the best I could do. So, it might be a little small, but that's how it goes. Um, I'm also missing a patch or two, because I could not find them online anywhere, which is not surprising, it's been 20 years. Um, and in my own local collection of a quarter century worth of patches, I could only find the first two. And I think there's been four? Three? I'm not actually sure. Not actually sure. Now for which faction we're gonna play. Um, the two factions have different weapons uh, and they have different architectures. But other than that, the campaigns are somewhat similar. Um, Eden will be busy escaping a monster of their own creation, while Plymouth will primarily flee massive volcanic eruptions. And of course, the novels that I mentioned are also depicting one side. And the stories overlap a fair bit. They're not the same story, <laughs> especially at the end you'll notice there are considerable differences. But uh, yeah, I think we'll start with Eden, and if there's interest later we'll play through the Plymouth campaign as well. But that will be up to you. Okay, I should probably stop talking now and start playing! Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, let's do that. Onwards. So, we're gonna play a new campaign. And the radio buttons here are there, but they're <laughs> invisible. That's one of the little graphics snags. So we'll play Eden, click, 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 and I think we'll play normal. Easy is very easy, hard is actually very difficult, because this game times every map. As I said, you were fleeing a disaster, so you'll, you'll always have, the, have to fight the clock. And if you don't build things in a specific order, odds are you will fail if you play on hard. So I'm gonna go with easy, just to make my life easier. Uh, not easy, sorry. Normal! Normal! Oh, my goodness. Easy would be too easy. Normal it is. Click, 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 click. There we go. But hard would be too hard, I think. I don't think I, I don't think I could I don't think I remember the game that well. Okay, and that's gonna bring us to Eden's intro video. Let's go. Among the remaining colonists of Eden, there is rumor. Uneasiness and fear. Their brothers and sisters in Plymouth seem lost. Eden leaders make brave promises, but behind the shuttered windows of the most advanced lab, secret projects progress. The rumors end when a breakthrough is announced. New Terra will be just like Earth, not in centuries, but in a single lifetime. Then, the dream becomes a nightmare. A mysterious, invisible killer has been unleashed. Escape is the only choice. Take what you need to survive. Flee and regroup. Remember, Commander, extinction is not an option. Okay. And so we begin. Extinction is indeed not an option. Let's see. Mission briefing. Commander, something has gone horribly wrong. We must evacuate the colony immediately. All available evacuation transports have been filled to capacity and are ready to leave. Our survivability projections have identified the vehicles and supplies we need to build a viable new colony. Gather these materials and run rendezvous at the mining beacon southeast of our colony. An exact list of needed materials is available in the specific objectives. Hurry, Commander, time is running out. A little evac transport there. Um, objectives, basically. So we're gonna have to load up uh, building kits. 
because that's how the game works. You have to you create um, structures as a structure factory, then then you get uh, small little IKEA building kits that uh, construction vehicles will just load aboard and haul out and actually build. So we need to get quite a few of those out of, out of the out of the factories. So we have some other basic vehicles that we have to evacuate along with the colonists and also metals and food, which is fair enough. As for our story, and as I did, I did say they will be reading. So we'll be <laughs> one conspiracy. Both wheels of the scooter left the ground as Axon uh, sailed over the lip of the down ramp and into the tunnel that connected the hot lab with the rest of the Eden colony. He touched down a third of the way along the ramp, the, the tires landing with a satisfying chirp that echoed in, uh, off the metal lined walls, motors whined, whining in protest. He was breaking half a dozen safety regulations, do, driving like a teenager at 30's biological age of 45. He didn't care. First of all, he was mad, damn it, and it felt good to break a few regs, and second of all, nobody was around to complain. The tunnels were almost deserted. Every adult who wasn't engaged in a service vital to the maintenance of the colony was in Nguyen's town meeting, the meeting Axe and Moon had just walked out of. Let's see. He fled past a huge set of pressure doors, startling a workman who was inspecting the utility conduits that lined the wall like rows of fat sausages. He, sque he squeezed, uh, squealed the scooter uh, around a right angle turn and up the tunnel towards his residence unit. He slowed slightly as he passed a group of children and their teacher bots strolling down the ramp from the nursery, then twisted the throttle hard over to scream up the last bit of tunnel. He hit the base of the ramp with a bump, started braking halfway up and slid to a stop just short of the open airlock doors. He nosed the scooter into the chain charging station next to a row of identical vehicles and plucked his keycard, uh, with its hacked safety overrides, from the slot in the handlebar. He palmed the card and glanced out through the tran tran station's observation porch. The sun was setting outside, exaggerating the hard reddish tones of New Terra's landscape. The buildings of Eden spread out before him like a cluster of silver toadstools. In the distance he could see the farthest of the lab structures, nicknamed the Hot Lab, where the meeting would still be going on. Nguyen was a fool. He'd known that. He simply hadn't known uh, how much of a fool until now. He rubbed the keyguard between his fingers. The main lock into the hot lab was the one door in Eden it couldn't open. Uh, Ax Amun wasn't a man who liked anything close to him. He wasn't a man who was used to it. He strolled through the safety lock, its open doors ready to spring shut at any sign of an, an emergency. New Terra's thin atmosphere would kill a human in less than two minutes. It was something you were uh, either eternally aware of, or you were dead. The common area, with its lounging chairs, planter islands and multitainment consoles, was deserted, as he'd hoped. He was about to break a law much more severe than a scooter speed limit. The one law that carried a death penalty, and he didn't want any potential witnesses around. He waved the key in front of the to door to his private quarters and stepped quickly inside. Good evening, Axe. The voice was cool, female, uh, with a slight accent that was uh, that all Savant series computers shared. The computer itself, a glossy black cube, a little less than a meter in, on the side, was recessed in a, to a console on the inside corner of the room. A window on the computer's otherwise featureless surface displayed a moving, transparent gearworks, like a clockwork, uh, clockwork made of glass. This was Kraft's ident identity icon, its face in a way as familiar to Axon as his own. It was as much a roommate as an appliance. The Savants were the most sophisticated computers ever made, almost human in many ways, undoubtedly superior in others. Good evening, Kraft. Verify security. We are secure, code word collusion. He nodded, the gesture doubtless detected by one of the Savants' many eyes hidden around the room. He sat down in one of the uh, room's two chairs. He had what were considered luxury quarters by Eden's standards, but the room was only two meters by three, and would have been smaller yet if he hadn't been allowed a little extra space for savant craft. Except for a few of the most advanced researchers in the labs, only the, the handful of surviving elders, such as himself, were allowed their own savants. He and Kraft had been together since he had emerged from cold sleep on the starship ten years ago, uh, out from New Terra. 
uh, ten years out from Utah. Yeah, um, he'd been just a child then, with only dim memories of Earth, open skies, and plants that didn't grow in a hydroponics vat. He sometimes wished those memories meant more to him. Eden was home now, for better or worse. Earth was dead and nearly forgotten. He sighed. Craft, open a stealth back channel to Savant Frost. I need to talk with Emma. There, he done it. Initiated a clandestine communication with the rogue Plymouth colony, an act of treason that will get him kicked out of the nearest airlock. One moment, Emma is in her quarters. Frost confirmed that she Frost confirms that she is secure. Opening voice. Open visual. Confirm. Craft sounded incredulous as if that were possible for a computer. Savants weren't supposed to have emotions, but there were those who had their doubts. Certainly Kraft had to have the justification. Uh, which visual communications would, have, would take a hundred times more bandwidth than voice only, with a correspondingly increased chance that their, their link, bootlegged on a subcarrier of a satellite control signal, would be detected. Confirmed. I want picture. One face of the Savants cube brightened into a display. Routing it through the internal network to the room's uh, intercom screen would have been less secure. Emma's thin, high cheekboned face turned toward him. Her blonde hair, streaked with grey, was piled on top of her head and held in place with a couple of uh, writing styluses poked into the bun. It had been years since he had seen her face. Sometimes he still missed her. This was one of those times. She looked into the camera, her eyes wide and with surprise. Axon, are you crazy? You need to see my face, Emma, I need to know I'm serious. This, this is worth the risk. Her brow wrinkled with concern, and she sat down. Behind her, he could see her quarter, quarters, if anything, smaller than his own, and as always, a discon disorderly heap of clothing, rock samples, and scientific equipment. What's wrong? You're not the joking kind, Axel. It's, N it's Nguyen. I don't know how to read Vietnamese names, sorry about that. Um, I told you he'd slammed the lid down on the on the one of the uh, one of the labs three years ago. We'd assumed he was working on biotech for terraforming. He's resisted all my efforts, legitimate and clandestine, to get inside. His scientists were are all handpicked and not about to talk. And today he threw the lid open, held a town meeting to show off his secrets. He was working on terraforming, but that's only a small part of it. He's also been mining the encrypted data files from the starship, the ones on military technology. He heard an almost imperceptible gasp from Emma. The founders on Earth had been reluctant to throw away any science, but they'd also hoped that the new world would avoid some of Earth's worst mistakes. Thus, certain information had been encrypted with the desire that it remain that way until the new civilization was ready for it. How bad is it? He has high-energy weapons, lasers of some kind, I think. He was hardly forthcoming with technical details, though he was all too happy to blast a hole through the piece of hull metal as a demonstration. There may already be fixed installations on this new security post, and he's working on adapting them to a turret on one of the mobile units. Maybe he has them operational already. I wouldn't put it past Nguyen to, to feed us misinformation. She smiles slightly. As though you and I don't know a thing or two about misinformation. Where did we go wrong, Axel? He leaned his head down and rubbed his brow, unable to face her. This had been his idea initially. We saw the computer projections. All elders, all the, all the elders did. Two independent colonies had a much greater probability of survival than one. We could have told the people. Not and have the colonies be truly independent. Creating a political rift seemed like the best way. So they basically engineered this rift. Oh, bad things. She nodded. And now you see where they brought us. He sighed and leaned back in his chair. You can see for yourself the different paths Eden and Plymouth have followed. The split might have happened anyway, given enough time. It is human nature to cl cluster into like groups. It is human nature for groups to go to war too. We should have seen this coming. Mm, there isn't war yet, Emma. Plymouth doesn't even have weapons. They will when they fight out. They'll be forced into it. How will they find out? She frowned, and a bit of the old fire flashed in her eyes. I'll tell them, Axel, if I have to. Of course, there's a, there are probably less direct ways. There always are. He didn't agree, but he couldn't argue. He'd uh, do the same thing if he was in her place. Mm, why, else had he, why else had he contacted her? Besides, she continued, 
If they start on terraforming without our consent, there'd have to be a reaction of some kind. It goes against the principles that Plymouth was founded on, of living in harmony with New Terra rather than trying to make it into some kind of Erzatz Earth. He cleared his throat and squirmed on the inner seat. Emma, from what I saw this afternoon, I'm pretty sure they're already started. Some kind of atmosphere-building microorganism injected into the bed bedrock. Just test well so far, but what? What the frag do you people think you're doing? He signed. He si sighed, I assume. Signed. Um, they hardly consulted me, Emma. Do you know that I think any such drastic step has to be by consensus? Which is a little hard to do when the colonies weren't even talking to each other. He could feel old wounds opening, feel them fa falling into the pit of their own differences, as powerful as the attraction that had once brought them together. It was your people who shut down the communication satellite. We didn't have the technology to talk even if we wanted to. It was an accident accident. The council just wanted to make a dramatic gesture. They had no idea that the satellite couldn't be turned back on. Besides, there's still our back channel through the weather satellite tunnel telemetry links. It's enough to open some dialogue between our leaders. It's too late for that. I've been trying to talk sense into Nguyen for years, face to face. What chance does some voice out of a box have? Her look turned deadly serious. Then it might be time to take Nguyen out of the picture, Axon. He felt the hair standing up on the back of his neck. Emma had the, the ruthless side that he sometimes forgot. What are you suggesting? Doing what we've always done, Axon. What's necessary for the survival of the human race. He shook his head. No, I can't do that, Emma. We're the last of the Elder Saxon, the last colonists born on old Earth. It is a dangerous world, even as protected as we are. We can't risk one of our, us dying without the program out of control. With the program out of control. Yeah. He was considering what she said, which is why he happened to be looking out the window as the fireball erupted. The sound came a fraction of a second later, mostly as a rumble in the floor. The air too thin to conduct any much noise. Somehow, without realizing it, he was on his feet and standing in front of the window. Maker's name? What? pleaded Emma's voice. I've lost visual accent. Malfunction, said Frost. Major malfunction. I've lost contact with all computers in lab structure 4. 20 seconds prior to this, a major cascade failure moved through the, all the structure's electronic systems. Emma, the hot lab exploded. I, see, I see, can see flames, so there is a major oxygen leak. It looks like the whole pressure vessel was, was, must have ripped open. Frag half the town was in there. The silence, sun, uh, silence just suddenly sh struck him. The alarms! Kraft, where are the alarms? All automatic alarms attached to Lab 4 have been disabled, per Chairman Nguyen's order. Sound distress alarms. Dispatch disaster response teams. Use my override coaches. Even as he was finishing the sentence, he could hear the klaxons sounding from every intercom speaker. Axon Emma called. What's happening? I can't hear you. The signal's breaking up. Axon ignored her as he, so, so he could listen to Kraft. Disaster teams have been unable to respond, said Kraft. Emergency tunnel bulkheads and airlocks were closed before the explosion. Open them. I do not have those override codes, and the doors have been locked. By whom? The doors are locked from inside. Axon, what? Emma's voice was cut off. We have lost the link to Plymouth. There is an incoming communication. Its origin is in the Lab 4 East safety airlock. It was the same lock Axon had walked through only 10 minutes earlier. Perhaps someone had gotten inside and sealed it before the building had completely depressurized. On screen. The big intercom screen on the far wall came to life. He recognized Lil Komos, one of the Nguyen scientists, but one of those most friendly to Axon's viewpoints. There were several he had thought she might agree, uh, agree to be uh, the mole inside Nguyen's. Several times he had thought she might agree to be the mole inside Nguyen's operation, but it had never happened. He could tell before she spoke that she was terrified and something else. She didn't look well. Elder, I don't have much time. I'm setting, sending this message to record and repeat. Something very wrong. Uh, something went wrong with the test well. I told them the organisms we were using were too dangerous. Lil, are you? She continued, either unable to hear him or unwilling to stop talking. It grows too fast, but Nguyen wasn't willing to listen to wait. An atmosphere in our lifetime, he said. She shook her head as though to clear it. She brushed her hair out of her face, and he could see that she was trembling. Not enough time to explain. 
attacks organics, even protein units in Poptronic computers, even the plastics in our environmental seals. In the background, uh, he noticed for the first time a slight hissing noise. Evacuate, now! Get everyone you can into the evac transports. Salvage what you can, but avoid the affected areas. And don't let anyone out. Get away and don't come back, she coughed. Her face was white and waxy looking. Well, waxy looking. Red veins clearly standing out of her cheeks. Don't try to rescue us or investigate. Get out while you can. Only you have the influence to make it happen, Elder. You and Guyen. And Guyen is dead. We're all dead. Don't. Her eyes went wide. Her hands came up as though to cover her face, then stopped halfway, shaking. Uh, she fell back against the far wall of the airlock, her body con shuddering convulsively. The camera lingered on her for almost a minute before she, there was a click, and the message repeated. Axon cut off the picture with a gesture before he could even uh, hear her voice again. He leaned against a chair to steady himself. He had to do what she said. There was no choice. He'd seen what was happening to her before the message was cut off. She was melting. And that is our story. It took a fair while, sorry about that, but yeah, the chapters are a bit long. But I do like this story. But you have the option to fast forward through it if you didn't like it, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, start mission! Onwards. So, the actual game. <laughs> now, we have to evacuate ASAP. Because that little explosion is happening up in the corner there. And we need to get everybody and every vehicle and everything out of the affected zones. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm just gonna start controlling all the vehicles so that they are in a better position. And this is in the old school way of doing things, so there will be a lot of clicking. Here we have the structure factory and the structure kits. We have to load them aboard. Some of the vehicles are already loaded with goods. We're gonna load more of them. Load aboard food, load aboard metals. We're playing on normal, so we won't have to do some of the more uh, extreme things. On hard difficulty, you'll have a lot more management to deal with. Uh, all the vehicles will be in the wrong position. You'll have to create... Um, you have to mm, actually do some refining before you leave, that sort of thing. So I'll just evacuate everything we have down to the mining beacon. Uh, you only have one structure factory, so we have to load these things rather quickly. Oh, no, 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 oh, that's okay. I was that one selected. There we go. You too. Down to the mining beacon. And that same applies to you. Ah, wrong structure. Just select the trucks there. Roll along. Yeah, come on out your board. So that's just, just you left. Good. Just one kit left to load the board, and that's gonna be it. Gonna be a, this first mission is going to be very quick, especially on the normal difficulty. I just wanted to get this rolling. Okay, so up here we have our infected lab, the advanced lab, and it, in, the infection is already spreading to these other structures. We also have structures that are disabled because we don't have enough population, we don't have enough uh, power, all kinds of problems. All the structure kits are now loaded. We just have to evacuate them. So now this first mission. On this first mission, you can't see the blight, which is what we're running from, which is what we've created, and that's all actually okay because on this first mission, uh, the blight spreads very, very slowly. On the later maps, it'll spread incredibly fast. And that will be absolutely terrifying. And you'll hear the savant complaining all the time here. Because we're getting a lot of communication messages. Where we're short of workers, morale is terrible. <laughs> That's something you'll definitely hear a lot. Um, yeah, people are dying. And you're also getting some messages because we're completing our mission objectives. Lighting up in green here. 
and they'll light up as soon as our vehicles arrive down here. Now if we've been playing on hard difficulty instead of uh, normal, we'd had to juggle uh, with power in order to activate all the garages because there would have been vehicles inside. We'd have to refine ore because we had would have had raw ore in the trucks that would have to be delivered to the ore melters and we'd have to grow food hopefully in time. So that would have been a little more stressful so to speak. But nah, normal is fairly straightforward. You just have to load up a few of the vehicles and move them down here. That's a mining beacon, let's just survey it. Just for funsies. But again, this mission will be very, very quick. The first couple of missions are very quick. So we'll be spending a lot of time reading. <laughs> As I said, I do like to read. Especially this story. I'm, play I'm, play I'm playing at speed 3, I think, so that's a fairly low speed, but I just want to have control of everything, especially on this map. You have done well. Our colony is surviving. Yay! And let's continue. Okay, we have survived at least the first mission. Onward to go. Now, I should probably take a break here, so I'm gonna do that. Um, yeah, if you enjoy watching this story or this series, uh, if you enjoy listening to me talking about the or reading this story, or if you just uh, like to support the channel, uh, please consider using those like and subscribe buttons because those actions help me out a great deal. Um, and if you have any sort of feedback, or you want to offer, the, uh, the com comment section is just down below. And uh, beyond that, as always, thank you for watching.